Hey everyone, welcome to the August Fragrance Awards. Our kids are back in school. I can hardly believe how quickly the summer flew by. Are you like me and the older you get, the quicker time seems to pass. It's like time goes into some strange physics, laws of physics warp and comes out on the other side like sped up as we get older. And I know that, yes, I know. <laughs> Fall doesn't technically start until the third week of September, but as a former teacher, the minute school starts again, it's fall in my mind. We would decorate our classrooms with fall theme and so forth. So in my mind, fall is here, but what's not here is fall weather. So in Virginia in August, it is the hottest, muggiest, like most humid month of the year. And we went through it this year in central Virginia with the heat and humidity in August. The nights are just starting to cool down. So this is a series where I share with you many, not all of the fragrances that I wore over the past month and put them into faux award categories to share with you my thoughts on them. And we're gonna start off with best for the season. Again, remembering that it was a hot, sticky month here. I have to give it to from Guerlain's Aqua Allegoria line, Herba Fresca. I only got a little bottle here. They definitely come in bigger sizes. You can find it directly on the Guerlain site. And I think Fragrance X carries it also. What I like about this fragrance, when I first purchased it, it was a little bit off-putting only because I wasn't prepared for the scent. But as I wore it more, I really came to adore it more and more. The best way to describe this is if you're a spearmint gum lover, that scent of spearmint gum, the way that it tastes in your mouth, combined with the scent, the freshness of it, the uplifting nature, almost almost slightly effervescent kind of smell. That's what's in here. This is a spearmint gum scent, in my opinion, with a tea accord, a green tea accord that ties it all together. But more than anything, if I didn't know what was in here, I would say spearmint gum first and foremost. And I really like that on days when it's super hot and you want something fresh and uplifting and crisp and clean. This is a great choice. It's a unisex scent. It leans neither feminine nor masculine. It is an EDT, so it is not the longest wearing. I got probably like a half a day out of it. I'd say somewhere in the neighborhood of four to five hours before it really sort of faded down into a faint skin scent, which is fine for the dog days of summer. So best for summer, Herba Fresca lives up to its name. In the category of best everyday fragrance, I got to give it to Cheeky Smile from Juice Box. This was gifted to me by So Avant Garde. I talked about it in a previous video. Let me give it up for the bottle that has this sort of textured frosty side to it. And then what appears to be a record, a vinyl record top that glows in the dark. It is the coolest bottle, heavy in weight. The scent reminds me a lot of those molecular scents like Molecule 01. It also reminds me of Skin from Clean Reserve, which is one of my all-time favorite day-to-day -day wear to the office, non-offensive, you know, wear in any occasion types of scent. This one reminds me a lot of those molecular scents. It does have a woodiness to it, some sweetness to mellow out the woodiness, and broxin, and a muskiness to it. It's very comforting. I don't think this is for everyone. If you don't like those sort of woody molecular kinds of scents, this might not appeal to you at all. But if that's your jam, those kind of like your skin put better sort of scents, you may wanna check this one out. As you can see, I've used it uh, quite a bit since I got it just last month and I'm really appreciating this one. The more and more I wear it, the more the sweetness of it comes out, which I really love when I first got it. It was a little bit more musky and woody, which was fine. I liked it then. But as I've worn it more, I'm picking up, my nose is picking up more of just this very subtle sweetness that makes this a really appealing scent. When I first wore this, my husband wasn't crazy about it. And then when I wore it again, he was. I don't know. I don't know if it's like the scent trains us to love it, <laughs> but it's working out. It's one that I would not hesitate to wear to an office setting, a meeting, something like that. In the special occasion category, I got to give it up to Veronique Gabay, Sexy Garig. Friends, if you like patchouli and woodiness and amber all together, think about a little hint of leather, that sort of vanilla, almost powdery suediness uh, and sweetness of amber combined with a really soft, sophisticated patchouli, not a dirty in your face, 
knock you around kind of patchouli, a little bit more sophisticated type of patchouli. You get that in this fragrance. Love these Veronica by bottles. They're really quite neat with the G on top and the wraparound sort of gold plating and the shape of these. I find the bottle itself very sophisticated. The scent is beautiful. It's really quite unisex. If you look on Fragrancica, it's voted mostly as a feminine fragrance. I think this would smell great on a gentleman as well and find it to be lovely to wear during the day. I wore it during the day but I would not hesitate to wear this out to a special occasion. It's deep, it's sexy, it's sweet. It has that like va va voom effect that I think is really great for a special occasion out. It has moderate longevity and projection and I think smells very lovely on a nice mature sexy scent. Both this one, Sexy Garig and Cheeky Smile and a few others that I'll mention here can be found on So Avant Garde and you're welcome to use my affiliate code for 20% off Veronica 20. Linked in the description box below. Fabulous fragrances. In the category of sexiest, I could have put sexy Garig and I could have put the one that I'm about to say in that category, the special occasion category. This one, some folks don't like. I don't understand that because I think it's really beautiful. And it is La Belle from Jean-Paul Gaultier. So we know that this one has pear, has a tiny bit of bergamot, a little bit of leatheriness we've learned in the middle. I can't say that I pick up any leather, but I can say that I pick up a lot of vanilla, a lot of musk, a lot of like a cooked pear, a concentrated cooked pear. So I'm not out and about a lot. I work from home, but I occasionally obviously go out to run errands. And I do see humans from time to time. Like some of my friends, we get together for dinner and that sort of thing. And on occasion, I go in for work events. So I'm not in a position, at least yet, to do like a most complimented video because I'm not out often enough. But the few times that I have worn this out in public, I have gotten a compliment every single time from both men and women. Women in particular are like, wow, that is really great. That's fantastic. What is that? I want to get a bottle. And men find it really alluring and pleasant too. I do like these bottles. Some folks are not into the bottles. They think they're gaudy. I think they're gaudy and adorable, to be honest with you. But I do find this to be a very alluring, sexy fragrance. It has a great projection and tremendous sillage. When I step into the car with my husband on date night, for example, and I'm wearing this, he's like, yeah, babe, <laughs> that's hitting the mark. So La Belle just she just doesn't disappoint. She delivers every single time, not just in terms of making me feel like I'm really put together and smell fabulous and womanly, but also in terms of getting a compliment in that kind of way, like a wow, you smell amazing kind of a compliment. This is for me, one of the sexiest fragrances that I wore in August. In the category of biggest surprise, I don't have a bottle of this fragrance, but I will as soon as that Sephora sale rolls around this fall. Y'all, I'm already filling up my cart. I have no shame. I'm a Sephora stan. I'm an Ulta stan. I'm a Joma Shop stan. I'm a <laughs> So Avant Garde stan. I'm a Fragrance Net stan. I fill up carts all over the place. My Sephora cart is filling up, and this one is in there. It is called Te Vani. Ooh, listen. I sampled this and talked about this in a video where I reviewed a couple of houses. Actually, it was three. It was Zoologist, Net, and I forget the, the third one, but it's Net is the name of the brand that I didn't know how to pronounce. I was calling it like Nette or something, but Net. The notes listed for this are just cardamom, magnolia, and vanilla. For me, this does come across as an almost warm, very ever so slightly spicy vanilla fragrance. I mean, it's the spice in it is just enough to add some warmth. This surprised me because when I sampled it, I liked it. But I thought, maybe I don't need a bottle of this. Perhaps I have some fragrances in my collection that are similar. So I chose to purchase Rose Parade for my sample set of Nets, which is another a beautiful, bright, effervescent rose fragrance. Highly recommend checking that one out and sampling it. But I did get a travel spray of Tavani, took it to Vegas, wore it one time to sleep at night. Husband loved it. I was shocked. So this is why this is the biggest surprise because I... Didn't think it was that noticeable of a fragrance. I thought it was soft on me, maybe fairly nondescript. And he just kept commenting on how he called it warm and inviting. And I love that. I think that's a great description for a fragrance. Uh, he liked it so much that I wore it the next morning to breakfast. And I actually wore it a third time because he liked it so much. So Tevani is a winner and it is sitting in my Sephora cart to come home to me. And I would suggest that you check it out also. There's a Fleur Coco or Coco Fleur one in that lineup that I would recommend along with that Rose Parade if you're interested in trying that brand net.
In the category of best bottle, I could have chosen La Belle or Sexy Garrigue. I love both of those bottles, but we talked about those already. And I do want to give some shine to Cartier. They make really interesting different bottles. Is this the most spectacular bottle? No. Do I appreciate how different it is than everything else that's on the market? I do. I love the black top with this red striping. I love this motif on the back. I like the sort of spear coming down the middle there and just the touches on the glass. Le Be Did I say the name? Le, Le Bezet du Dragon. This fragrance morphs on me. Every time I try it, it's a little bit different. But some of the essential notes that come through every time are essential accords. I would say or like a slight booziness, definitely an almond accord is present every time that I try it. Tonight when I sniffed it again, I got almost like a sensual soft powderiness that I haven't picked up before. So I wouldn't call this fragrance gourmand because of the almond note. I will call it warm and cozy and maybe sensual and sexy as well. Some people call this a beast of a fragrance. I find it to be a little bit more soft and moderate in terms of the bubble that it creates. I do get decent longevity out of this, but I think it's one of those fragrances that's best experienced up close in a hug. It's like a warm hug in a bottle with a touch of sensuality and sexiness. The more that this sits, the better that it gets. And the more that it's like ambery, resinous, a chord comes through for me. There's also a slight bit of woodiness. So this is like sensuality in a bottle, but in a very understated fashion. Like people are going to notice you with this on, but you're not going to be screaming for attention. In the category of worst bottle, I actually like the bottle, but let me explain why it's in this category. It is Chemise Blanche, which is from LM Parfums, Laurent Mazzoni. I believe it's how you pronounce that. Mazzon, Mazzoni. The thing is, <laughs> the bottle, the bottle sleek clean, aesthetic, architectural in nature. I like the clean lines on this, but it sort of betrays what the fragrance inside smells like, except for the fact that it is a clean fragrance. But when I look at a dark bottle, I'm expecting something sexy, alluring, a little mysterious, a little vampire-y. This is really a very much, a, exactly what it's named, white shirt, chemise blanche kind of fragrance, white t-shirt or starch white shirt, button down that has been starched and ironed. That's what this reminds me of. It's all to hit it's very clean, a little musky, has a little touch of sweetness, a little bit of citrus, slightly powdery. It's so delightful. It's so pleasant. It's inoffensive. It's great for everyday wear. It's great for when you want to be put together in a nice pair of jeans and a button down white shirt, not just any old white shirt, y'all, the button down with the collar that's crisp, clean and tight. <laughs> that's what this fragrance is for. Really delightful day-to-day -day clean laundry-esque type of fragrance without being too in the aldehydic direction like some of those laundry detergent types of smells are those scents not like that almost like the the scent that wafts out of a laundry cleaner dry cleaner that's what they're called not laundry cleaner veronica the dry cleaners that fresh clean pressed smell imagine that with a little bit more soapiness added and some musk and a little bit of sweetness to it. Really delightful fragrance, pricey, but worth it. I find that this gives a nice little scent bubble and lasted me through the day. So chemise blanche. In the category of favorite blind buy, this could also really qualify as a hidden gem, which is a category that's coming up. I mean, it's not hidden, but in the sense that people don't really talk about it anymore. It had about a two minute shine period back in like 2021 or thereabouts on YouTube. And then people just forgot about this fragrance. And I, I don't understand why, because it is a beauty. This is La Via Belle Intensement. What a gorgeous feminine balm of a fragrance. It's not quite as sort of loud and in your face as maybe the original La Via Belle is in the sense that this is a little bit more tempered with some fruity notes and a little bit of powderiness from, I think it's iris and heliotrope that are in here. Don't quote me on that. You definitely get that hint of patchouli, a little bit of sandalwood, and I believe a heaping dose of vanilla. A heaping dose? Is that what you call it? A big dose, a grand dose, a super dose of vanilla in the fragrance. What I, I love about this is that it is sweet and inviting and enveloping. For me, this felt softer. However, when I wore it in my house, people could smell it across the room. Granted, I did overspray on this. I know it seems like I haven't gone through a lot. I've worn this maybe three, maybe four times, four-ish times total since I've gotten it. But every time I wear it, I'm like, why am I not pulling for this more? This is a 
stunner of a fragrance, very attractive, very alluring, but in a soft, feminine, gentle way. I can't say enough good things about this fragrance. It was a blind buy and I just adore it. And I also described that it has a little bit of doughiness. There's a peer here on YouTube that mentioned that. And I was like, oh yeah, I could sort of see that in this fragrance. So our fragrant friend Jay said that. So hi Jay. Mm. I just I have a special place in my heart for this. Next is the category of not a safe blind buy, although I really enjoy this one. I will say that I thought it was really bizarre when I sampled it. I would definitely say get your nose on this if you like fragrances that are out of the norm and you don't want to be smelling like everyone else. You like something a little bit more adventurous and out of the sort of cookie cutter perfume style. So this is Indigo from Nest. I had one of the minis of this probably for a good year and a half to two years, kept sniffing it. I found it interesting and intriguing, but thought that it was a little bit off-putting until I tried it on one night and just fell in love and said, I, I really need to have this. So this is described mostly as a fig fragrance. I have to tell you, I've been moving away from fig a little bit more here over the recent year and just being a little choosier about the fig fragrances that I have in my collection. That happens, you know, you sort of fall in and out of love with notes. And that's okay. That's just sort of part of the, the hobby of enjoying fragrances or anything in life, friends. But I, I have to say, whether I get the fig in here or not really depends on day to day. For me, this is almost comes across minty. There's not mint in here. There's tea, there's fig, cardamom, bergamot, and a woodiness. Do I get the woodiness? Yes. Do I get the fig? I mean, I guess if I think about it, yes. And definitely tea. There's something that feels sort of creamy and minty in this fragrance. It feels bright when I put it on, but also cozy and warm at the same time. So it's cold and warm. And I find it intriguing for that reason. I really do enjoy the Nest bottles with the designs on them. As simplistic as they are, there's also something just elegant and fun to look at with the designs from Indigo. I mean, from Nest, excuse me. But this is Indigo. I find it to be projecting and long lasting as well. This takes me through a good work day. I can still sniff myself at dinner time if I've applied it in the morning. So definitely check this out. Try before you buy because it is, I think, on the weird side of fragrances. In the overhyped category, and this one sometimes gets me in a little bit of trouble here on YouTube, but hey, I'm just speaking my mind like everybody else does on their channel. I have to say that Kayali Musk 12... <laughs> This is the one from August that goes in this category. This is another one of those travel sprays that I took to Vegas with me. Do I like this? Yes. Is it a nice fragrance? Absolutely. If someone asked, you know, should I buy Musk 12? I'd say, hey, if you like a clean musky fragrance and you want something that's simple that way and will work in multiple occasions, for sure. I just put it in the overhyped category because some folks just go bananas over this fragrance. And for me, it's just not that much of a love. I find it to be nice, pleasant, and easy wear. Definitely, uh, you know, a lovely clean musk with a little bit of floral to it. I have to say there's something that's a tiny bit abrasive in the fragrance that would probably make me reach for other musk fragrances before that. However, I don't have a bottle. I have a travel spray. When I finish a travel spray, well, it's not available anymore, is it? Or is it still available on the Kayali site? Let us know in the comments if, you're, if you know what's going on with this fragrance. I think it's off Sephora. I don't know if it's need, needing to be restocked or being discontinued. I have no idea. But if I had a bottle of this, I would certainly use it. However, I think the point I'm making is I would reach for other musk fragrances before that, like Cheeky Smile would be more interesting to me than Must 12. So that's it. And that's the only reason it's in the overhype category. It is a nice fragrance and I do give it two thumbs up. Then in the category of hidden gem, and by hidden gem, I just mean something that people don't really talk about either anymore or have never talked about. So one of these did have its minute of shine on YouTube, friends, and it needs another minute. <laughs> I know some people don't like this and I just, I can't understand why because I really love it, but isn't that the case with fragrance, right? We love what we love. And this is Prada La Femme. Every time I reach for this fragrance, I'm reminded again how beautiful it is. It wasn't hidden a few years ago. It made the rounds. Everybody had a bottle or a lot of people had a bottle. It got a lot of shine. And then it just became one of those YouTube forgotten gem types. And so I'd like to revive the love for this. This is a beautiful soapy floral fragrance or floral soapy fragrance. I mean, even just sniffing it from the nozzle, it's gotten better as it's sat in my collection. It's become even more of a gem. I liked it when I first got it and I love it even more now. 
And I just really enjoy how classy and sophisticated and clean but floral and inviting this smells. This is elegance in a bottle, in my opinion. One that I think is mass appealing for me in terms of other people smelling it on me. Maybe it's not mass appealing in terms of a lot of people wanting to wear it. And so if you're not a lover of florals or aldehydic types of fragrances, those soapy clean fragrances, you're not gonna like this, I understand that. But for those of you that like that combo, you got to check this out. It's a gem. Folks complain that it doesn't last long. And I will say when I first purchased it, it was a little bit weaker. Now that it has sat in my collection, I got, I would say a good six ish, like in that neighborhood, six ish hours. I'm good with that. I don't need it to take me into dream time at midnight. <laughs> you know, six hours is a very respectable performance. And I just think that this is class and elegance in a bottle. So I said what I said. Check this one out. And I do have a second hidden gem. This is a favorite of mine. It has been for a long time. I've told you about this fragrance in multiple videos. It is sadly discontinued. So if you find it and you like this scent profile, grab the bottle. It is Ginger Essence from Origins. I've been through multiple bottles of this fragrance at this point. If you are into ginger and if you are into citrus, I believe there's lime and maybe bergamot in here but definitely like a limey, gingery sweetness. It's almost like lime and ginger with some sugar, some sugar <laughs> sprinkled on top. So delightful, rather fleeting. Sadly, this is not a fragrance that lasts long. I do pair it with the ginger souffle, ginger essence souffle, which is like a whipped, almost like a butter for the body. So, and that prolongs the longevity, but on its own, it is a fleeting fragrance. I cannot, I cannot tell a lie. It is so light and ethereal and wispy, doesn't have heavy notes in it. It really just sits lightly on the skin, but it's just delightful. It's such a happy fragrance. And so it's one that I love to douse myself in and I'm really not looking forward to the day that it'll go down to the last drop because I'm going to have trouble finding it. But if you can get it and you like ginger and you like citrus, ooh, it's hard to do better than this. So next we'll go to the low three, the middle three, and the top three. And I do have fragrances in each of those categories for this month. In the category of low three, I have three lovely fragrances that open beautifully and just don't last long. And oh, it's so aggravating. So among the travel sprays that I took to Vegas with me, I took Florist from Ellis Brooklyn. Let's give it up, please, for this gorgeous hot pink bottle that came out ahead of the Barbie craze. Maybe if it dropped in the summer, it would have gotten even more attention. Love the name of the fragrance. Love the concept. If you look at the notes, there's lots of beautiful white florals. There's a fruitiness in the fragrance and a little bit of citrus. It opens so happy, so flirty, so pretty, so like summer party girl-esque. Like you spray yourself and you're just going to go live your best life out with your lady friends, you're going to go to brunch or something like that. And you're just going to smell your girly best self. And it lasts for maybe 30 seconds, 30 minutes, not seconds, Veronica, 30 minutes, <laughs> that beautiful, bright part of it. And then it just kind of settles down into maybe a, a little bit more of a chemical mess that just like something's off on your skin. At least for me, that was my experience. And I felt sad because I love the opening. When I sampled this, I love the opening, but it had the same problem then. Bought the travel spray anyway, wore it in Vegas. And so, you know, I got ready in our room. We hung out and watched a little TV and then went downstairs for breakfast. By the time I got in the elevator to go to breakfast, it had kind of started to turn a little strange on me. So let me know if you've tried this fragrance and if it behaves on you the whole time, because man, that opening's gorgeous. Another travel spray that I took with me. Um, I need to show you all a little more shoulder. Hold on. Boop. Another, <laughs> Another travel spray that I took with me to Vegas that I enjoyed the opening of very much. And same thing happened. Like it settled down into something a little like blah, like meh, I want something else. Coconut Sun from Seven Virtues. Okay. Coconut water, vanilla, yellow florals. I mean, it does have a really nice appealing opening, a nice sort of balance between those three things, like the warmth and sweetness of the vanilla, the yellow florals, the coconut to give you that summer dream feeling. And then unfortunately, this also sort of settles down into something that is rather bland to me uh, in the sense that I don't want a full bottle. I've got lots of beautiful summer fragrances that scratch that same itch, if you know what I mean, without having to purchase yet another bottle that's going to be an underperformer overall. So sadly, Coconut Sun is in the low three.
And the last in my low three category is one that has a scent that I just adore, but boy, is it really soft and really fleeting. And it doesn't matter how much of it I spray or what I put under it. It just goes away quickly, but I love it. And it's Ote Blanc from Bulgari. Love these bottles. As I've mentioned, I really just enjoy the classy tops on these bottles, as well as the shorter squatter ones that have the sort of same, I call them wide shoulders on the fragrance. Ote Blanc is what we call your resort lobby scent. It's that beautiful, like woody green, like a sandalwood green tea scent floating, wafting through the air when you walk into that luxe resort with the super high soaring ceilings in the lobby and you go to check in and everybody's living their, their best luxe life. And that smell that just invites you and lets you know you have entered the sanctuary of the resort. It's that kind of smell and I really adore it for that a little bit of citrus, some spices in here, also light spices, but mostly like a green and tea and sandalwood scent that is just very alluring, but faint. And for that reason, it's in the low three. And because it doesn't last long. So there we go. In the middle three category are three scents that I really, really like a lot, maybe even love, but they didn't beat out the top three, but these are highly recommended fragrances. Some people are hating on my girl, Cloud. <laughs> from Ariana Grande. I haven't tried the new pink one. I've seen a lot of the reviews here on YouTube and have decided to pass because for the most part, I'm hearing that the pink is a lot like this with maybe some added fruitiness, which sounds lovely, but I guess I don't feel compelled to go purchase it, but you never know what happens in the future. I've thrown away the obnoxious My Little Pony, you know, white, white bases. They look like they belong in some, you know, play school set from yesteryear. I can't stand those, but the bottle itself, I don't mind this bottle with the little cloud on top. I think it's kind of cute. Some people consider this fragrance juvenile. Others consider it really close to Baccarat Rouge 540. I can just tell you that I adore this. It grew on me. When I first tried it in store, I was like, what is everybody raving about? And when I wore it on skin and saw the effect that it had both on me and the people around me, it became a winner. So the fragrance is musky, but in a, a very light way, it's got like almost like this spun airy feeling to it. It's sweet. It is cloud-like. It's got a little bit of that sort of band-aid medicinal thing that Baccarat Rouge 540 has. I don't know what gives it that. There's supposed to be coconut in the fragrance. I can't say that I pick up a distinct coconut note, but I do pick up the kind of like maybe soft creaminess that a coconut note may lend a fragrance along with just the sweetness. I just adore this. I think it's beautiful. I feel good when I wear it. My family likes it. It's a winner. Second in this category is one that I've given love to here on my channel in several videos recently, and it is Pear Ink from Juliet Has a Gun, a house that's notorious for fragrances that don't last very long. I would say this is a half a day fragrance, four to six hours, somewhere in that range, depending on the weather in your area, how moisturized you are and all the rest, my friends. I gotta moisturize the skin. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is so good. And again, another one of these fragrances that I enjoy more and more the more that I wear it. It has a very light, clean, crisp, fresh pear. It is not the deep, juicy pear or the cooked down pear that you might get in LaBelle. It is just that super freshly picked pear that's not quite yet ripe. Like when you cut in and the skin's still tough, but it has that light, fresh, sweet, juicy smell. That's what you get here, plus a shampoo clean vibe that just make this so delightful and easy to wear and you all mass appealing. Another one that I've gotten compliments on while wearing out in public in the rare times that I have gone out in the world <laughs> in an elevator, been complimented on this uh, from other gentlemen. I just think it's a delightful fragrance. Is it simple? Yeah. Do we really need to be completely complex from day to day? No, of course not. We can wear basic fragrances and smell fabulous. Let's bring that back in style. And third in this category is Bubble Bath from Maison Margiela, a fragrance that for me does smell more like coconut. I pick up more like a dense coconut in here type of thing than I do in Cloud. Okay, this one just comes across sort of sweet and a little creamy. If you've tried the 2.0 version of Cloud, it's even creamier and deeper, and I love that one too. This one has a nice deeper coconut accord to my nose. 
as well as what bubbles of a bubble bath smell like. It's very evocative of that. So you get the clean aldehydes with the coconut fragrance. It's also musky and warm on the skin and will develop differently on different people. This is one that might get a little funky on some people's skin. On me, I think it smells fantastic and I really enjoy it. And it has decent lasting power. This one takes me past a half a day, you know, into the early afternoon type of thing. And it does have nice projection. Interesting, really cool fragrance. Let's get to the top three. In the top three, you know, it is August and I wanted to wear some of those beautiful summer fragrances before summer started to kind of go away. So I wore, oh, I love this fragrance, Tom Ford's Soleil Blanc. This is the Eau de Parfum. There is an Eau de Soleil Blanc, which is lighter, airier, and more, has more of a, like a citrusy aspect to it. This one is deeper, creamier, denser. This does have a bergamot note. It has coconut and yellow florals as well as white florals. And it is just gorgeous sophistication summer in a bottle i picture being in greece with white walls white buildings white linen suit or a flowing white dress or something like that a sun hat and this fragrance on and it just gives me my best summer life this feels like what summer should smell like in my opinion i love this i love this i love this not the most incredible longevity again you might get a half a day out of this and you have to reapply and at the price point that's kind of offensive. I will say this is on Joma shop right now as of the day I'm filming this video. The big bottle is I think in the 270 range for Tom Ford, that is a bargain. So go check that out. And the 1.7 ounce is on there, I think for like 175. I have a link below for Joma shop. If you want to shop through that link, it's an affiliate link for this and a number of other fragrances that I'm mentioning in this video. I love this. I love this. It is like the quintessential summer fragrance along with terracotta. Like if I had to do, well, you've already seen my summer capsule by the time that this <laughs> airs. So this was in there. So let me leave that alone and move on. Then another quintessential summer fragrance. Love this. Smells great on. This is one that has the potential to get overwhelming if you're not into the citrus aspect of this. It is Malibu Party in the Bay from Simone Andrioli. And I was today years old when I realized that it says on the bottom verses of life. So that must be the line of fragrances from the Simone Andrioli range that this sits in. Never noticed that. And if I did, I have forgotten. But this is one that I've had since last summer and it doesn't look like I've used a lot. And the reason is you really only need a few sprays of this and you're good to go. So this is probably the equivalent of, I don't know, eight to 10 wears since I've had it, maybe more. It's intoxicating, very unisex fragrance. If you need something that leans feminine and girly, you are not going to enjoy this. But I also don't think it's heavily in the masculine direction. I think it's more so somewhere unisex. It's lime. It's, you put the lime in the coconut. This puts the lime in the coconut. Lime, coconut, and rum. Oh my gosh. The fragrance also does give you a little bit of woodiness. I just, I love this. This is the quintessential summer party fragrance. So if this one is your elegant white linen suit type of thing, this one is your yacht, 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 yurt, yurt. We're not partying in a, well, we could party in a yurt, yacht. It's your, your yacht fragrance, you know, for all those yacht parties that no one's having. But yeah, have y'all, have y'all seen the videos of Han, is it Hanover Inlet? Hallover, Hallover Inlet, isn't that what it's called? If you haven't seen those, check those out. Let me tell you, entertainment for hours watching those boats go through that inlet and some just disaster strikes. Anyway, let's not wear this on those boats. Let's wear this in, <laughs> in calm waters. Fabulous, lasts all day. Husband loved this on me. I wore this recently and he just chased me around and kept asking what I was wearing and commenting on how good it smells. Oh, that smells good. You smell great all day long. And then I'm going to end this video with one that could have easily been a surprise fragrance too. I talked about this in another summer video. I tried this before like a year ago and I liked it, but didn't get a bottle. Recently got a wild hair and picked it up. It is Jean-Paul Gaultier. There's two JPGs in this lineup. Le Beau. Le Beau. This is not the Le Parfum version of it. There's a darker, deeper version, which I'd love to try too. This is just a regular Le Beau. Market it toward men, but ladies, ladies, <laughs> hubby loved this on me. So when I purchased this, it came with a travel spray. So I took the travel spray to Vegas and sucked that thing down. It might have like one or two <laughs> wears left. And my husband loved it on me. He thought it was really nice smelling, which I'm surprised because this is marketed toward men. 
So the fragrance is mostly, it opens up a little masculine. So you've got to give it maybe 10 minutes to work its magic and start to settle down. But you get coconut, a woodiness, and vanilla. It's sweet, coconut, and woody, and has a touch of citrus to it. But it's alluring. I would consider this unisex by the time that it dries down. And it's long lasting. This thing takes you through the day. It goes on and on. And you will get compliments with this. This is beautiful. So ladies, don't sleep. Don't sleep on the male torso. All right, so that's the August Fragrance Awards. Let me know what your favorite perfume was in the month of August. Drop it in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, my friends.